Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitamount.com and Peel Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is Friday, August 30th, 2019, heading into Labor Day weekend. And this is our weekly video. We'll bring you up to date what's going on on the site and what we've been up to lately. And take a look at some eBay auction results. Take a look at some things that are happening over at Catawiki. So sort of a lot going on right now as we head into uh, Asia Week starts in just a few days down in New York City. And uh, one of the things I wanted to mention was that for the last couple of weeks, we've been uploading the catalogs. We get, the, we get the, the PDF files from them, we convert them into permanent catalogs and upload them, as many of you know, onto our bookcase. If you're on our site at bitamount.com and you go around uh, and you see a thing for reference book section or auction catalog section, it brings you here. And right now there's over 467 past auction catalogs and bulletins from the Metropolitan Museum and so forth, mostly auction catalogs about 85 percent but this week we did add around 20 or so in the last couple of weeks uh, very good bulletins and uh, books that the uh, the Met has put out the Met has been digitalizing and, and making available for free a lot of their books and some of these books that sold for hundreds of dollars these are beyond just the the the, the quarterly bulletins these are uh, full-blown books. Uh, one of them was this one. This was a, a, a very interesting uh, uh, exhibition that was done in the late 90s, 97, 98, somewhere in there. It was called Flowers Underfoot, and it was an exhibition of a very early Indian carpets uh, from the Mughal period, and uh, it, it was an amazing show. I, I love uh, early carpets, and uh, this show was fantastic. And they had uh, some of these Mughal carpets, if you've never seen them, are enormous. They're over 30 feet long. They took years to make, and uh, they had workshops established for them. And this is quite a book, beautifully illustrated. And if you like that kind of stuff, uh, you, you might want to browse it. It's, it's in the bookcase. The other thing is uh, this, this thing. This was a, a really good bulletin that they put out uh, back in the uh, uh, 90s, 97 this came out. And it was their uh, Asian art uh, highlights of some of their Asian art uh, collection. And uh, there's bronzes, jades, all kinds of good stuff in there, and some good reading. Uh, the Met uh, does some really scholarly stuff with their books. The next book that they, they put up was The uh, Dawn of the Golden Age. Uh, they also put up Possessing the Past, which amazes me. That was an enormous book and beautifully done. I think it's 400 pages. It's all on the bookcase now. If you want to go through it, you can read it. You can. You, if those of you that use it know how to pull the images in so you can see it. And then on to the Asia Week sales. Uh, there's another segment of the Jungkook collection coming out. This is uh, Stephen Jungkook. He was an American collector. He passed away back, uh, I think, in the 70s. And uh, a number of years ago, his, his heirs began selling off part of the collection. The Jungkook collection was absolutely massive. Uh, I can't, he was on a, sort of a, heading into the power of Sackler land uh, as far as his collection goes. And he had absolutely amazing stuff. Uh, he had a, a Midwest uh, company, a, a tool and die company, I believe, and um, just poured money into Asian art when it was available. And uh, it's a great, great uh, uh, load. And I, I don't see any end to it. And then there's the Sotheby's Important Chinese Works of Art, which has some great things in it. Uh, as always, and the Metropolitan Museum is deaccessioning part of their uh, gift from Florence and Herbert uh, Irving. Uh, the Irvings, uh, as you may recall, back in January, they had an, a two-section auction from their estate that they were selling. The rest of their collection went to the Met, and this was a massive, massive collection as well. Thousands of pieces of Chinese and Japanese art. And the Met has gone through it, through the gift, uh, and, and they're thinning out just a few pieces in accordance with their gift to raise some money to, uh, to sort of more, di more, more effectively diversify their holdings. And um, the Irvings would have no problem with that. Uh, the Irvings actually lived across the street from the Met. They, they looked at it every day. And uh, they left a, 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 them an enormous gift of all kinds of fabulous things. They were inveterate collectors going back to the 1940s. He was the founder of Cisco Foods, the big food service company. With it. I think he founded it with his brother. Um, very successful, legendarily well-run company, and um, and they were very generous uh, in their wills. And then on to this, the Christie's catalog masterpieces of early Chinese gold and silver. Uh, there's a great bowl on the cover with gold and silver lotus bowl and other great things. And there are other catalogs. I think there's eight or nine of them. Bonhams has a very good sale as well. 
So you want to check that out, okay? And uh, like I said, you come over here to the bookcase, you can go through them all at your leisure. All righty, and now let's take a look what's going on over at eBay. One of the things that we've done in the last couple of weeks is that we've changed the eBay Today page uh, because so many people have uh, uh, begun using it. Um, this is the, uh, let's see, where is that page? Uh, da, 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 da. Here it is. All right, um, uh, we, we noticed a lot of traffic going in there and it wasn't really set up to get all that traffic, so we did some revising to make it work a little better. And on this page, our, uh, it updates every morning by nine o'clock. If you're looking for things to buy on eBay, we check the stuff that goes on here from eBay. And the Catawiki page uh, or section at the bottom of this page also updates every day. So you don't have to wait for the newsletter. If you've signed up for it, you, you know, I'm, I'm glad you did. You know, and if you haven't yet signed up for it, uh, because the newsletter page has things on here that are not always in the uh, eBay Today page. But uh, there's some really good things on here. But as you can see, um, we've decided to let this page grow. This is all the stuff that's just on Catawiki this week. There's a ton of stuff. And uh, we've devised ways to pull in the, uh, the, 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 uh, the listings and check them out and so forth. So that's updated every day. So that's a change that we've, we've made in the last couple of weeks. We've sort of been working away at it while we're doing the catalogs and doing other stuff and doing our regular business. All right, now, um, here is last week's uh, newsletter page. There was a little bit of a glitch with it last week. Some of you may have seen it. The uh, header here at the top, for some reason, on some, some, for some people, didn't update. And uh, it was to do with uh, a minor conflict that we've been running into little bugs ever since the site was mi migrated up to a VPS uh, to, so it could handle the size of the site now. And uh, I think it's been resolved. But uh, if, if you had that problem last week, you'll notice that the, the content was okay, but the top of the page didn't update properly due to some little, 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 little glitches in the system. We'll just leave it that way. All right, so let's head over and see how things did last week on eBay. First thing is, uh, you remember last week I talked about this plate, and I was very worried that it would take off at the end. This is a copy. This is a, a, it's a, it's a much later fake of a very, very famous service, as we discussed last week. It's a copy of a plate from the Martha Washington service that was given as a gift by a Dutch trader to the Washingtons in the uh, 1790s, late 1790s. And this plate is a copy. And uh, I, showed the, I showed examples last week of the real ones versus this one. And uh, it was up to about 3,500 or 3,000 or so last week when we talked about it. And in the end, it went for almost $14,000. All right. Had it been real, uh, this plate would probably be worth upwards of a quarter of a million. But um, uh, enough really smart people avoided it, and a few people were being hopeful. Um, and hadn't really ever seen a, a real one before, I, I'm afraid got caught in this thing. If, if it's too bad Joni's up in Canada had that. Shame on them. All right, now over to uh, this. Uh, this robe that we talked about uh, last week, it went up, didn't make its reserve at about 5,600. The guy relisted it, and uh, it didn't make the reserve again at over 6,000. And... Um, Unfortunately, this is sort of a bad practice. So he's bought this thing in twice. Um, and um, it, it, the problem with doing this is that uh, there's a 7.5% fee based on what it buys in at, uh, on, the, on the reserve price. So he's, he's got a, uh, uh, about $500 in unsold or buy-in fees since uh, uh, he began listing this thing. So he's sort of digging a hole for himself. Reserves are not always a good idea. We'll just leave it that way. So, uh, anyway, that's what that's what's happening here. So he'll probably relist it again or something. I don't know. He shouldn't have he shouldn't have put a reserve on it the first time around. It got up to fifty six hundred and sixty six dollars, and now he's upside down on this thing for another five hundred. So I don't know what he's going to do. Be careful with the reserves. All right, and now on to what sold. Uh, it was this, this pair, a nice pair of 100 Boyd jars. Um, these typically sell for about $1,000 a piece um, when they come in, especially if they have their, li their lids on them. And uh, this was a nice mirror pair, uh, mid to late 19th century. And uh, they ended up selling for 3000 uh, A nice rule of thumb typically is that a, 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 a pair of vases or jars, if they're good quality, are generally worth about three times the price, two and a half to three times the price of a single. So the, these sort of brought right about where they should have, uh, right there, as, as expensive as that may seem. 
And uh, this was sort of these were sort of a bargain of the week. I, I pointed these out. This was a nice little set of kisis, and uh, I like kisi work. I like the color. I like the way they're done. These are late nineteenth century ones, but I think there were four of them here. All right, and there's a nice floral one. That and that's sort of that's an unusual one with the flowers like that. And uh, the whole, all four of them just went for hundred and ninety dollars. All right, if one of you got it, good. All right, but if you didn't get it and you were thinking of coming back later and putting a bid on it, you know, as I always say, leave a bid, leave a bid, leave a bid, okay? All right, now over to uh, the next one, this Bing Krong Bowl. Uh, this had a nice copper rim. I like it when they put copper rims on these and sort of deck them out a little bit. And a copper foot uh, it was about a five and a half inch bowl. These typically bring, you know, four to five, six hundred. This was a pretty good buy. This this one was actually quite a good buy. It went for $255, uh, which is very reasonable for that. And it may be the fact that we're in the middle of the summer. Prices are a little bit quiet. But that was a heck of a nice buy, nice bowl. And then on to this, the Lotus Bowl, a uh, well-known pattern, but a popular pattern of export uh, export bowl with the lotus rim and, and, the, and the trees in the center. Sometimes you see chargers that are nearly identical to this, big plates with also the symbol of the craggy tree in the middle with flowers. And this bowl did pretty well. It brought $870, which is about what they uh, typically they bring. This, it's a desirable pattern. And... Um, it had no cracks or hairlines or repairs, so apparently it was in very nice condition. And then on to this. This was that Republican period uh, Kong vase with elephant handles and the uh, wintery scenes, those wintery enamels, I call them. And they did them on plates. They did them um, on, on, on tea sets and so forth. They're very desirable. Uh, here's a picture of the side of the thing. There's the elephant. The elephant head on this was beautifully enameled, too, I must say. And there's the mouth of it. Okay, nice old piece. Uh, had a couple of inquiries about it from folks. I don't know if any of them bought it, but a number of people asked me if I thought this was legit. And I thought it was very legit. That's why it was in the newsletter. And uh, nice looking foot on that. That, 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 that little bit of iron oxide, that sort of amber color. Uh, usually an indicator of some age to it and, and done properly. And uh, it brought $5,322, which is a good price. And I don't think that was all the money. I wouldn't be surprised to see that turn up in, in an auction house and maybe do a little better. All right, and then on to this, the Chun Chi bowl. This bowl had a tiny little chip out of, a, out of an edge, but it was a neat pattern. I love the pine trees, how they loop over and create scrolls, and then you have the, the, the crane on the ground and then an ascending crane. It was a very charming scene. These were, of course, made for the Japanese market in China, and uh, it brought $228, which is a very reasonable price for that because visually it was very successful, very artistically done. And uh, on to this. This is another, I think, really good buy. It was a 17-inch, uh, circa 1780s uh, Chinese export platter. Um, often used as under trays to terrines. But it had the spotted deer pattern with those very nicely, elegantly done pine trees. And then an expanse, like a bay in between, some water in between. And then a, a scholar's uh, studio in the distance. And these nifty little Ling Bai's popping up here out of the rocks. Just well done all the way around. And it went for under $300, $293. Had a little bit of wear on it because these things were used um, often. And um, uh, when I was a kid, my, my grandmother had some of this stuff. She used to use it uh, every day wear, actually. And uh, we, we serve roast beef on these things. At any rate, um, it was a nice, nice platter, and it was big. And $293 for, for 18th century blue and white that's painted that well, I think is a very, very nice buy. And then on to this. This was it, it listed as an 18th century uh, ink pot. It wasn't. It was, a, it was a 19th century one. The, the seller is up in New Hampshire here, at coast to coast. And uh, he has a good eye for things, but he sometimes strays a little bit on the dating. He's not duplicitous. He just, he, he, it, 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 to him, it felt like it was probably older. It doesn't matter. Everybody, everybody that collects uh, scholars' objects knows when this was made. It was a good 19th century piece. And uh, it ended up doing just fine. It brought $1,070, and it was worth every penny. It was a nice thing. All right, and now on to this, the uh, hat stand. This was a really nice hat stand. It caught my eye. Uh, the only drawback was it had been drilled out because uh, so many of these were made into lamps. Uh, there was a lamp craze in the 20s and 30s in particular where they took these and cored them out because they weren't worth a lot. Remember, they weren't that old, and, and you could buy these for 2 or $3 back then and uh, make a very attractive set of lamps out of them because they often were sold in pairs. 
but it was a nice thing. And it ended up selling for $550. As he says, it came out of an estate. This is a seller of middleman brokers down in Florida. They get a lot of a lot of states get settled out of Florida these days. And uh, this, the uh, May Ping vase, this sold a week ago. And I, I want to bring this up because I hate this. Really annoys me. Sold a week ago, and the buyer didn't pay it, and it went for seven or eight thousand, as I recall. And uh, the seller uh, just relisted it, uh, and it's too bad because he got hurt on this, um, and he probably should have held off on relisting it for a couple of months, and um, maybe shot it with a different background to give it a fresh look. But any rate, uh, he ended up getting five thousand for it this time around, um, and I do hope someday eBay really does crack down on non-payers. Because uh, this kind of thing is bad for the business, and it just annoys me to death. All right, if you buy something, pay the darn bill. All right, if you go to a live auction, don't pay it. You'll never go to that auction house again. And uh, here in New England, when people don't pay their bills, the word spreads like wildfire through the auctioneers, and uh, you're unable to go to any auction. You can't even register. The, the word gets around. We we did an auction up in Maine a few years ago, helping uh, with some good friends of ours up there. And uh, somebody was there that had, had stiffed a couple of auction houses, and he drove all the way up there to the auction, and I was tipped off to it. And I went over to the man and said, uh, we don't want your business. You're a deadbeat. And um, we asked him to leave. All right. Um, you, you, you go to an auction, you bid, you pay. And even if you've made a dumb mistake, pay your bill. All right. Um, and if you don't know what you're bidding on, don't bid. All right. That was my lecture for the day. All right, now on to the armorial dish. This was a nifty armorial dish, 18th century, and a very unusual color palette, very dense pink enamels. And initially when I saw it, I thought, is this thing Samson? It's not. This is Chinese. But very unusual, and it looks to be some sort of a wedding, a wedding set uh, because you have two figures with two separate banners joining and two crests here joining, and those are typically thought of as, as wedding, uh, wedding pieces or some sort to commemorate two families anyway. And uh, this did pretty well, but I don't think it was a crazy price. $550 for something visually very interesting, I thought. And then over to this, uh, the, the, the boxwood carving. This was one of the great bargains of the week. This was a great buy. This is a beautifully done 19th century boxwood carving of, 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 a, of a beauty holding uh, a ribbon, ribbon wrapped <clears throat> vase. You've seen them, in, and they actually made them out of porcelain. Where the, on the porcelain, there is a, a band that goes around it that looks like a ribbon, but it's made out of porcelain that's made into the piece. And uh, here it is, she's holding one. And uh, But the robe work on this, the way the robes were done, the draping of the robes on this, this carving was just excellent. Excellent. Good color. Um, minor bits of wear down around the bottom, which is typical when they get to the ends of these. Uh, but this was a great buy. He's showing there's a tiny nick out of the corner. Nobody cares. And uh, here's the back of it. But notice the fluidity of the robes. This nice soft surface. Little elements added, like a leaf under here or a feather. Just beautiful. <clears throat> and it went for only $255. And this thing was a nice, perfectly good size, too. It was uh, uh, 21 centimeters tall, so it was about 8 inches tall. It was a nice size. All right. And I thought that was an absolute steal. All right. And on to the silk. Um, always leave a bid on things. If you see it, if you see it and you like it, leave a bid. Don't say I'll circle back. You procrastinate your way out of it and, and you don't get it. All right, now on to this, the silk. This was a nice hanging, beautiful color, very warm red on it. A lot of gold thread, a lot of gold thread on this. Had a few minor areas of wear, but overall a very, very pretty robe, uh, a pretty panel rather. And it had a water stain at the top nobody cares about because no one's ever going to look at it. And it went for $680, which was, I think, a perfectly good buy. I think that was very reasonable. There was somewhat similar one on here that had dragons in it uh, a week or two ago, and I think it went for over 1400 1500 so this was a good buy and then on to this this was another really good buy this was an authentic 15th century plate made in the 1470s or 80s somewhere around in there uh, beautiful beautiful plate uh, and it was these these were typically made in China and Jing Duchen for export to Southeast Asia they turn up over there sometimes you see them with, with big peacocks in the center instead of the flowers 
if that rings a bell with anybody. But the florals, the floral rims on these were very, very uh, typical. This is how they always did them. And uh, here's a picture of the back of it. And uh, good photographs, whoever took these. Uh, really, really shows the characteristics of the back. That nice iron oxide line around the foot. The foot is nicely, neatly cut and trimmed and squared off. And uh, uh, good glaze creeping up and so forth. And uh, look at this. This thing only went for $837 for a 15th century example. Um, and that was a good price for that. That was not, a, 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 by any stretch of the imagination, any kind of overpayment. Uh, nice plate. And uh, then on to this, the Blanc de Chine incense burner. Uh, this was a good one, 17, early uh, 17th century uh, 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 well done, nice glaze. It had a, a hairline in the body, though, so it held the price back. But uh, if you don't have fifteen hundred to eighteen hundred bucks to drop on one of these, you could have had this one for five hundred and forty-six dollars, which I think was pretty reasonable. Authentic, nice old piece. This came from a seller in London. All right, and now let's uh, hop over here. Uh, this is some of the stuff that's on uh, Catawiki this week. And this will be some of the stuff, this is on the eBay Today page, and some of this stuff will be migrated over, and uh, we're going to add a bunch of things onto the uh, 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 newsletter page. If you've signed up for it, you'll be getting it uh, an update this, uh, this evening when it comes out. Um, on on uh, Catawiki, there's this. this. I thought this was just a really pretty teapot. And it has some metal, later metal mounts added to it and so forth. But I thought the palette was quite unusual with these uh, parrots here and just the way it was done. Unusual color palette. This is not closed yet. It ends in, uh, let's see, it closes in a couple days. So you might want to check that out on Catawiki. And then this is up. And uh, I had a number of inquiries about this. We had we had pulled it and put it in the, and I think it's on the eBay Today page. And uh, this is a, a Guangxu butterfly base. A lot of fakes of these around. This is a real one, okay? Um, here's the bottom of it. Sadly, it had been lamped a long time ago. And this is how they used to lamp them in the old days. Uh, they would score the center of it and they would use chisels, can you imagine? And they'd chip it out on the bottom and make an opening for the rod and they'd use they do measurements to center it and uh, as you can see they went right through the gong chu mark because at the time this was done this vase was probably only about 30 years old and uh, but here's the decoration on it uh, i'm very glad the seller put really really good photographs in. this is this is what the butterflies should look like they look like they're actually flying if you sit and look at it and let your eyes relax yeah, there's a wonderful sense of motion. Uh, there's a nice look at the enamels up here and so forth. Okay, this is a nice vase. Uh, even though it's drilled, it's doing pretty well. It's up to uh, $8,257. Um, it doesn't have any reserve on it. Ratchers over in London has this, or it, uh, Borders in England, rather, UK. And uh, it's a nice face. These were typically sold in pairs. So I suspect the, the other is either long gone or was maybe in very poor condition. But that's a nice vase. Um, undrilled, these bring in that with that decoration, you know, they'll bring 20 or 30,000. So we'll see where that goes. All right, and then onto this, the Kung Shi plate. This closes in a couple days. I thought this was lovely. We, I posted this on the forum just because I liked it so much. Loved the border on it, the, 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 the variations of border patterns. And I like the way the center's done with lots of little flowers coming out. And this thing, I think, is about 15 inches in diameter. It's a good size, nice plate. And, uh, well, and that's up to $811. That's nowhere near the money. And uh, I suspect it'll, it, if it doesn't more than double by a good bit, uh, it's a steal. All right. And then on to this, another nice Kesey panel. I thought this was charming. Uh, yeah, some of you are saying, oh, it's got a horse in it. That's why you put it in. Yeah, I, it's true. I did. I, I love horses and animals and, and art, you know, and sheep and lambs and goats too. But the horses I always find particularly interesting. And uh, this is a nice one. The color palette is very soft, very pleasing. And it's a framed scene, which is lovely. And uh, right now, this is just up to uh, one bid of $99. Uh, it should do better than that. Uh, what size is this? This thing is... Da -da -da. Oh, they're doing the centimeters and millimeters thing. Okay, um, 310, so about a foot by a foot, roughly. A little, little less than a foot by a foot, but it's a nice panel. And then this, the Republic dish. This is a very good dish. Uh, I like this a lot. Here's the back of it. Uh, nice old example, uh, beautifully done, nice enameling, 
Uh, there's a fellow at Leisure here with the Rootwood stand and all that. That closes uh, in uh, on Sunday. It's only up to $280. I expect it to do probably four times that, but uh, we'll see. But it's a very nice dish. All right. And that's about it for the week. If you haven't subscribed to us here yet on YouTube, please do. Uh, if you haven't gotten the newsletter or signed up for it, go come over to bitamount.com and sign up and uh, get the weekly newsletter. And you can see what we find on eBay and Catawiki each week and what we're up to. And, um, you know, leave comments, uh, give us a thumbs up, whatever. All righty. Uh, have a great week. Enjoy the long weekend. Uh, I hope everybody's got Monday off. And uh, we'll be back next week, and we are working on uh, a couple of new videos to do with the Asia Week sales, and uh, we're gathering up some images, and hopefully we'll get that out. Uh, I've got a bunch of house calls next week, so it's going to be a little bit tight. That's the only thing. Uh, some, a bunch of things popped up all of a sudden, but we'll get to them. I, we will always get to them eventually. All right. Have a great weekend, and see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>